Today's session uh, will be covering what are the benefit terminology, prerequisite, and the structure. So when we talk about Oracle Fusion benefits, uh, it's uh, the similar platform that we can uh, relate with what we had into eBiz that we call it advanced benefits. So we, on the similar line, we see that the configuration, the terminology uh, are going to be same except the navigation part, which is a bit changed into Fusion. Yeah, we do have some added uh, functionality as far as uh, Fusion benefit is con concerned. But when it relates to different modules, it will have impact on payroll. It will have impact on uh, cell service. And certainly the core HR part also gets uh, where the dependent information comes into picture. Okay, Amrish, um, yeah. sorry. Uh, can you go back to the content? So when you said uh, you will split this into two sessions, mm -hmm. so uh, what, uh, are th is this the whole content of benefits and this will be split into two sessions <laughs> or is this just for the first session? No, no, no. I do have the content separate with me. I'm just referring to the PPT as of now. I have taken okay. care of the content which was requested. Uh, we are real quick. This is what was expected. Right, that is benefit plan design, benefit policy eligibility criteria, management enrollment, and benefit administration. Right, it's a vast module. Don't worry, we're going to cover most of the things uh, into two split modules. That is why I wanted to set the expectation in the beginning of the session that this is what we have heard from your end. These are the four topics that you would like to, uh, uh, you know, uh, get this session for. But if you look at, we have uh, f uh, close to 51 slides, and since it's a very vast module, and get integrated with other, uh, you know, cross modules as well. So I want to split it. That's why I projected upfront so that we will have two different sessions where agenda is clear, you know, and we achieve the goal so that we have a very clarity, very much clarity about the benefits and how it is, you know, uh, moved into the system. Make sense? Okay, so is that the first, so you just would start and you know, finish as much as you can in this session or do you have a plan that you will finish these two no, sessions uh, in this session? My agenda is that we will try and finish uh, the topic that you are looking at on the notepad first, okay, in this session, okay. as well as I'm going to cover, uh, you know, what is feasible as part of this session which will have relevance to the next session as well. So we'll try and cover as much as possible. Okay, uh, with reference to what has been expected out of you, so that in the next session we ha we can you know resume from what, where we are leaving today. The benefit when we talk about benefit, basically I'll give you a little idea. Like uh, in any of the organization, uh, the organization would give there are a couple of some of the benefit which comes by default when you join as a employee, and there will some of the benefit that you choose or opt for as part of your uh, you could say employment. At the same time, when the concept comes into eligibility, like uh, it's a very common uh, terminology, eligibility profile or eligibility criteria. So if we look at EBS days, we had the same thing in, uh, in forms of eligibility profile. So now we have something like eligibility criteria, which is nothing but you as an employee qualifying for certain benefits plan or any plan. It could be benefit plan, appraisal plan, or we can call it a flex rate plans. <laughs> Now, when we say eligibility profile, that is always uh, a concept which uh, an industry or an enterprise would decide, like, uh, you know, how, uh, you know, a benefit would be given based on what eligibility a benefit would be given to the employee. At the same time, an employee can opt based on what are the criteria that qualifies for an employee to go for a benefit. Next, we would like to go over these are the key, uh, you could say, um, points that we're going to go ahead that is design a program, quick credit program plan, flex credits, sophisticated and computational life event management, schedule life event processing, self service enrollment. Self service, once again, we will not be touching this uh, for today, but I will go ahead and I will discuss about self service enrollment. This is more of enrolling from the self service functionality. We'll come to that point. Rule-based benefits, service center functionality, easy program, extract and import, or social network. I mean, that's a different thing altogether. <laughs> now, uh, let me highlight flex credit first because I think that's uh, the topic which was, uh, uh, you could say, requested more and more with a lot of emphasis in that. So flex credit when it comes to benefits, 
we have a concept of uh, benefits as eligibility, benefits as flex credits. Now, when we talk of flex credits, uh, let's take a very uh, lemon example. Uh, when we join any organization, there's a concept of some credit points, or uh, you could say uh, some credit. Uh, we get, I mean, that depends how a company or enterprise would, you know, give these credits. So flex, flex credit basically enables you to opt for a plan or opt for a, a benefit which is more of a, you know, which allows you to make use of your flex credit as an employee and opt for those particular plan. Now there's a different setup and configuration altogether. Uh, this basically depends if a plan is created or it's a plan allows you to make use of your flex credits to opt for that plan or not. For example, your medical plan, uh, insurance plan, your benefits or so many, uh, you know, a number of plans that an organization or an enterprise can go for. So now we'll quickly log into the system and see how we start with uh, our, you know, benefit plan first. <coughs> So I'm logged into the application. You can see uh, this is R30 new release. Uh, I don't find much of change in terms of the application the layout. It's just a little bit of, uh, you could say, uh, the way of uh, yeah, the things are aligned. That is only change a bit this time. So the first thing that I would like to navigate is Setup and maintenance. This will bring us back to the same page once I'm, you know, logged in. The best functionality is we need not have to worry about the navigation. We just need to know the keywords that we are looking for. Now I just put in plan, and I'm getting all the, you could say, components that we need to configure into benefits. Now the task on the left hand side, the function area is showing up benefits. So the function area which are related to the task will show as per the modules. So we can identify that these functions or the basically the these tasks are basically covering from the benefit module. Now when we start with the inception point, what do we start with? How how does this configuration go or how uh, you know the setup actually uh, is done? So first of all uh, we start with the plan. Now it depends like you know, you would like to create your plan and uh, you would like to create your eligibility profile or eligibility criteria, so on, so that you're going to, you know, con you're going to create these, uh, you could say, uh, components all together and then, you know, you're going to sync it or you're going to stitch it together so that a process flow works because it will certainly be a part of the employee sales service once we are done with this. So we have to also ensure that the employee sales service follows the same pattern what we have designed for our benefits. Because an employee will be raising or would be registering or enrolling for any of the benefit plan and the plan has to be displayed in the same fashion that we have designed up here. So first is manage, uh, benefit plan type. So we're going to see how we configure this benefit plan first. Okay. Now this screen basically if we talk about our configuration of the benefit, this is the first screen that comes to mind that, you know, we need to ensure that n number of plans, uh, like no matter how many plans an organization would go for, they will be creating their simple plan over here. So I'll go ahead and do it for you. Now, cell service grouping. And the cell service grouping also have a concept when they have a different group into the organization for the cell service, they're going to make use of those groups. So as of now, you can see the values are there. We have a number of values which are listed. But yes, in the real-time scenario, you can always identify that how many groups uh, uh, organization uh, is based. So start with, uh, you could say, uh, complex in order to configure this basically grouping but yes we can make use of the values as of now just randomly put some code
option type. Now, where you're going to make use and as an option, like it's going to be part of the absence, health coverage, incentive, long-term care, saving, and yes, the most important are flex credits. So, depending upon uh, you know the classification or the option type that you would like to mark this plan, you're going to make your choice. So as of now, we're going to make it as a health coverage. Effective date, yeah, is very important. We need to ensure that we are tagging the effective date because this will have a validation rule on the system in terms of other plans and the eligibility for an employee. So we'll keep it to such date. Uh, I guess I'm putting it in the wrong window. Yeah. So, macro plan, extract plan, type name. These are not mandatory information to capture. Uh, effective bid going to be assisted, which we we are tagging over here. Now we already kept in the option type as health coverage. The option information. If you would like to upload any of the images, yes, any uh, description or status, we can make note of that else we can just go ahead and create our first plan which is test benefits medical keep a note of this handy for us Good. so we're going to save it So in uh, when you move ahead in the system, you will certainly find that these plans are also used as you could say library. Uh, the functionality is like you know we can create every time new one, or we can always extract it, or we can copy the old one and make little bit of changes and then publish those plans. Hmm. So it actually helps to reduce our you know duplication of work. So we're saving it and we're closing it. This is the one which I was talking about. And this we can search. We can always make search of our plan and update the plan with the end date. So what we have seen is basically we have created a plan, which is our benefit plan. And these plans are created as open uh, date plans so that we are not tagging into the plan with the end date as of now. So that we can make use of those plans in future and we can also make it as a library plan so that in future if we want to create any annual release plan, refer to the old plan from the library, update the uh, information and then use it. Now next is what we are going to cover is benefit options. So what are the benefit options like an organization would offer for? Now plan type for the option, if we have different plan type, you can make use of those plan types. And this is the screen that we are looking at create an option. We are basically, we are creating other options that an employee would be making use in terms of their benefits or any of the benefits that they are looking to opt for. So we have started with time coming from the system, end it. We are not going to keep any end it. Option name.
required period of enrollment. Now, required period of enrollment is like um, uh, you could say when we upgrade benefits, like uh, you would have seen you know uh, back in the US as well when there is a duration that you have to enroll your benefits and then uh, the nominees has to be uh, enrolled or entered into the system there's something on the same similar pattern that you are enrolling or you are keeping a plan open for a certain period that an employee would certainly go ahead and they would enroll themselves within that window so that you can freeze the information waiver option we are not going to Consider waiver option in any other plan. Now, allowable dependent or beneficiary designees. So it's like more of a, you know you could say dependent or you could say contact information that you would like to uh, configure for. If your plan allows or if the plan gives you the feasibility to make note of such information, so. <coughs> We'll see what all information we have there. So you can see effective dates, uh, group relationship, type, beneficiary dependence. So this is what I was referring to dependence, basically more of a contact information that we are tagging into assignment. <coughs> Cover all eligible, yes. Now this is uh, the information that basically tags for your plan, your family, uh, you have uh, children, uh, spouse, maybe based on the information we can make use of this. So we will make this available for the family. Independence. Not required. Type. We'll keep it open. So you see we have created our good relationship information as well or the dependent and the beneficiary. We'll save the changes. This is we are creating create option for the benefit plan. That means we are giving options under a, a plan to the employees. It's done. So we just created our plan. Now, when we search it, we have it over here. So we can make use of this as a replica and creature as well. Test medical, yes, as option, employee self-service option. You are done with this, welcome up. So what we have covered is basically managing benefit option, manage benefit plans, and then there is a concept which is called program.